tonight on Stand Up for the Week, Jack Whitehall, John Richardson, Andy Osho, Rich Hall, and tonight's special guest, Paul Chowdhury. But now, please welcome your host, Kevin Bridges. to another episode of Stand Up for the Week, the show featuring the country's top comics giving their views on the week's news. <laughs> it's been an interesting week. Uh, there's a lot of stuff happening this week. Uh, we're still at war with Libya, are we? Is that still going on? I, I, I don't really know how we're getting on. I've sky plus it and I'll find out. Maybe. <laughs> Colonel Gaddafi, he's still hiding out in a bunker protected by 40 female virgin bodyguards. That's it's quite, a, it's quite a specific job title, isn't it? Uh, how do you how do you apply for that vacancy? Hi, my name's Sandra. I'll gladly take a bullet, but I refuse to take a cock. <laughs> we also had protests in this very city. Anybody attend the London protest at the weekend? Eh? Did you go? Of course, this guy went. He was at the front. This guy. Did, did you have a sign? No, I took my mum. You took your mum. <laughs> As opposed to taking a sign, you took your mum. <laughs> Does she get tattoos, like no cuts on her forehead? No. <laughs> oh, these anti-establishment riots, they always happen on a Saturday, don't they? Don't they, they arrange them, like, yeah, let's go and have a total fuck the system protest, man. Let's go and take it to the man. Let's go and show anti-capitalists. Yeah, we're anti-capitalists, yeah. How about Wednesday? No, I'm, I'm working 12 till 8. <laughs> uh, uh, my boss will go nuts if I phone in sick again. <laughs> yeah. Nick Clegg, he's, uh, he's proposed a Lib Dem reform. Did we see that? They're thinking about having a new name and a, a new direction and a new logo, a new Lib Dem logo. It's been suggested using a pair of scales to imply fairness, evenly balanced scales. I would suggest for a new Lib Dem logo a picture of a spineless man bent over a map of the UK and being fucked in the arse by <laughs> David Cameron. <laughs> Folk-lived images of David Cameron just fucking away. <laughs> Liberal Democrats, we get fucked in the arse so you don't have to. That's uh, <laughs> the good old new slogan. <laughs> it's quite, it is quite depressing, the news, recently. Sometimes when the story becomes so bleak, it's only the way that it's reported that you can see the funny side. Like, I've seen a headline that said, Night Stalker found guilty. Like, oh, obviously. <laughs> that was never in any doubt. The Night Stalker is guilty. It was a case of finding who the Night Stalker is. No, he wasn't always known as the Night Stalker. It was a series of brutal sex attacks that earned him that nickname. Now, nobody went to school with a guy called the Night Stalker. <laughs> well, guess who I seen last week? Remember Night Stalker from Geography? <laughs> Just in the pub. Nice guy. He's got a job at his uncle's scaffolding firm. Oh, aye. Well, I always felt a bit sorry for Night Stalker. I felt his name held him back. <laughs> so, we're going to welcome on our showbiz correspondent, giving all the news from the world of celebrities. He's absolutely brilliant. You know him well. Give it up for the wonderful Jack Whitehall. <laughs> So I'm here to talk about the week's entertainment news. Uh, a lot of stuff's happened, especially on television. A lot of shows have started this week. One of my favourite shows, Channel 4's Super Size versus Super Skinny. Yeah. I saw that in the radio times and I thought, a little bit unfair, Super Size is going to kick the shit out of Super Skinny. <laughs> but that's, that's not what happens. They don't do that. They swap diets. That's the show. It's a really fat person swaps diets with a really, really thin person. It's like, that's not helping anyone. Both the diets were very bad in the first place. Just swapping them is solving nothing. You might as well have a show called Diabetic versus Chocoholic. <laughs> this week on Diabetic versus Chocoholic, David tries insulin, whereas Colin is forced to eat a Twix and dies. <laughs> 
And they use these mental things as well that you only ever see on television to help people lose weight. These ludicrous gimmicks. The worst is the skip. You know when they do that, they get a really fat person, you're like, Barry, who's 40 stone. And then they get all their food into a skip and bring him out to try and humiliate him into being thin. <laughs> Ooh, look at that, Barry, look at all that food. Do you know what that is, Barry? That's what you eat in a week, you big fat pig. <laughs> look at all the food in a skip. How does that make you feel, Barry? Well, hungry, obviously. <laughs> Other new shows this week, uh, the Katie Price one, who Katie did, I mean, what Katie did next. <laughs> I just don't see her appeal, I don't see the appeal of Katie. Because people, oh, you know, she's sexy, yeah, because she's not just a set of tits, she's also a very successful businesswoman. So's Deborah Meaden from Dragon's Den. <laughs> I wouldn't have sex with her if she was the last man on earth. I wouldn't. <laughs> Because I watched that Katie Bryce show, I watched it a tiny bit, it is excruciating. In the episode I saw, right, she was going to the dentist, and she goes to the dentist, and as about as she goes into the clinic, she turns around to the camera, she's like, sorry guys, you can't come in here, this bit's private. But Katie, if you go onto the internet, you can see inside your vagina. <laughs> There's no privacy left, love. And it's not like we've asked to come to the dentist, you fucking brought us here! <laughs> no one likes going to the dentist, this was your choice! And do you know what she was having done in the dentist as well? Katie Price, she was having her wisdom teeth taken out. I was like, really? I would expect her wisdom teeth were taken out a while back. Along with her dignity teeth, her self-respect teeth, and her knowing when it's time to fuck off teeth. Unbelievable. I've got some other news, right? Justin Bieber has announced this week that he is going to be doing a concert for the people of Japan. I read that and I thought, haven't they suffered enough? <laughs> I, no. They've been to a lot of shit. And the last thing they need is him. I'm not, I'm not begrudging Justin Bieber. You know, he's a young guy, he has achieved a lot. And I, I don't wish anything bad against Justin Bieber. But I do also hope that puberty hits him like a fucking freight train. <laughs> I hope he gets torn apart by puberty like a pack of hyenas, <laughs> leaving him looking like Claire Balding in a hoodie. <laughs> the, uh, well, oh yeah, this was an amazing story that happened this week. This was in the Daily Telegraph, right? The Daily Telegraph had a story this week saying that the presenters that the BBC were putting forward to present the royal wedding did not have enough gravitas and were far too young to present the royal wedding. And they said they did not have the maturity required to do it. And then they listed the BBC presenters. And the first one they listed was Hugh Edwards, <laughs> who is 50 years old. <laughs> He's been presenting on the BBC since 1986, but the Telegraph deemed him too immature for the royal wedding. <laughs> what the fuck were they expecting? <laughs> we go live now to the Abbey, where we're joined by Hugh Edwards. Any highlights so far, Hugh? Yes, I just gave Sir Trevor MacDonald a Chinese burn and he cried like a bitch. <laughs> Although, admittedly, how much better would the news be if Hugh Edwards was as immature as the Telegraph for painting him to be? <laughs> Next on the BBC, the news at 10 with Hugh Edwards. <laughs> I'm Hugh Edwards. The headlines tonight. Colonel Gaddafi is a massive bender. <laughs> A murderer has been sentenced to 25 years in prison where he's gonna get proper bummed. <laughs> and finally, sources confirm my mate Morgan has found some of his dad's pornos, so we'll be watching them later. Get in. <laughs> now it's time for the weather with Rachel. In case you were asking, yes, I have tapped that. Third base, double digits, Rachel. <laughs> Me in the end of my uh, celebrity roundup for the week. You guys have been absolutely wonderful. Have a fantastic evening. Good night. Still to come, Rich Hall and the Usher, John Richardson, and tonight's special guest, Paul Chowdhury. Welcome back. Start off with Kevin Fiona. We're having a good time. Uh, and else been happening in the week's news? Prince William had his stag weekend, pretty exciting for him. It must be quite strange being Prince William or Prince Harry on a stag night. And they're stuffing pictures of your gran into a lap dancer's bra. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, 
I say, Harry, I just really does feel quite, uh, quite sick, but I might be lying if I said I don't have a chubby. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're all waiting. I Kate Middleton, her, her mum and dad, they own a, a party accessories online company now. They've been accused of cashing in, releasing merchandise. I think Kate Middleton's dad should just be proud of that. He's a businessman. I think his speech at the wedding should just be him addressing the assembled gantry and saying, my daughter has just married Prince William fucking Kuching. <laughs> has anybody bought any, any royal merchandise? Any royal wedding merchandise? Anybody bought anything? There's plates. He has. He has, this guy. <laughs> he got what? Royal Johnny's. You ro oh, Royal Condoms, it is. <laughs> Royal Johnnies, is that their official title? That's true, you can get Kate and William Condoms. It's not the only Royal Contraceptive. You can also get a photograph of Camilla for your headboard. <laughs> so, are you ready to crack on with the show, everybody? You feeling good? That's this guy. Great notice the show. Everybody has their own theme. This man just has to come on and be himself. It's Unpredictable, but always hilarious. Give it up for the sensational Rich Hall. Thank you. Sorry, I'm a little uh, ill-prepared this week, ladies and gentlemen. I had to write some of these jokes down, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, generally, uh, you know, figure this stuff out beforehand, but I think, uh, much like you, I've been uh, stunned this week by the passing of um, Harry Coover, much as you people are. <laughs> realize I'm preaching to the converted here, but uh, Harry Coover is a man who invented super glue, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, <laughs> passed away this week at uh, the age of 94. Wonderful man, yeah, yeah. Tremendous contribution to society, and uh, he'll be greatly missed. Let's see what else is going on. Uh, <laughs> Did you really think, ladies and gentlemen, I was going to stoop so low as to make a cheap, tawdry joke at the expense of a dead guy? What kind of a fucking show is this? <laughs> if that's what you want, your cheap, too soon, crappy jokes, go on the internet, people. This is a man who invented super glue for fuck's sake. Who does it? One of the most amazing. Don't look away like I'm not talking to you, fella. <laughs> you use super glue. I would never make cheap fucking jokes about a dead guy. The man who wrote the definitive text, ladies and gentlemen, on the practical and military uses of resins and polymers and adhesives. I know it sounds like a boring book. Well, I fucking couldn't put it down, all right? <laughs> that is not a fucking joke, you vultures. I'm trying to say some nice words about a man who stuck around for 94 years and refused to die because he knew he'd become a cheap fucking punchline and you people are making up your own jokes here. The comedian not come out and say a few nice words. I got jokes, people. I got fucking jokes right here and I'll be happy to use them. But I'll tell you what, right? Fucking... Uh, I, I traveled through the park uh, during the uh, demonstrations this week. Uh, the organizers claim 500,000, the police say 250,000. So right there is a huge problem. If you can't tell the difference between 250,000 people and 500,000, then I am playing the O2 Arena tonight, ladies and gentlemen, and it's fantastic. <laughs> so apparently some, uh, some of these protesters went into uh, Fortnum and Mason because, yeah, they're, they're keeping the man down. Because, uh, you know, without picnic items, how can we... Uh, that's the first sign of chaos right there, isn't it? So if you are an anarchist, basically you have no fucking plan. So what were you hoping to achieve? You're an anarchist. You have no plan. But London is already a fucking anarchic, chaotic city. So the only way you can raise any, uh, you know... Go into TK Maxx and put shit back on the shelves. That would burn some heads. You go, what the fuck are they doing? Did you hear about these anarchists? In America, we don't really have that whole class thing. We're money just, it, it, it just, you know, it just sees through every class and education and accent. In America, basically, you're either rich or poor or struggling to get by. That's the three fucking monetary classes. And it's very easy to tell which you are. 
When you go to work, if your name is on the outside of the building you work in, you're rich. <laughs> if your name is on your desk, you're struggling to get by. If your name is on your shirt, you are fucking poor. <laughs> Just look around for your name. Uh, right. yeah. I see, so you need some plumbing work? If you have a number on your shirt, you're a convict, so be glad that you're poor for fuck's sake. <laughs> So the secret, ladies and gentlemen, because I've traveled up north quite a bit in Britain, and that's where I've discovered that the actual secret to all your uh, financial problems, take away chicken. <laughs> because I don't care what's going on in the rest of the business world, the fucking take away chicken business is heaving. There are chickens martyring themselves to be eaten in Britain. Holy fuck. I was in a place called Skipton, and I, it's not like, yeah, there you go. And, uh, <laughs> I pass this place, uh, it's about two in the morning, and uh, it's called King Turkey Fried Chicken. <laughs> Not Kentucky Fried Chicken, just King Turkey, clearly taking advantage of illiterates and drunks who are just gonna look at the sign. Does that say Kentucky Fried King Turkey? Cucky, cucky, turkey, cluck, clucky. Is it turkey? Is it, what the fuck it? Let's see. <laughs> Overlit fluorescent hell hole, and it was fucking crammed. <laughs> Two bouncers and a fucking takeaway chicken shack. <laughs> what kind of people are they turning away? <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. You do not meet the criteria required to enter this establishment and eat food out of a bucket. Now just fuck along. <laughs> You can travel around London and you see all kinds of aberrations of Kentucky Fried Chicken, which is an American is astounding, because it is Maryland Fried Chicken. Oh yeah, there's no uh, Texas Fried Chicken, Kansas Fried Chicken. And these people have no fucking sense of humor whatsoever. Because I walked into the Kansas Fried Chicken, I ordered the chicken, and then I went up to the owner and I said, sir, how have you managed to capture that great Midwestern plain spirit, that forthrightness of the Midwestern people in your chicken? How do you do it, Ahmed? It's amazing. <laughs> And then I was told to fuck off. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. You've been fantastic. Good night. Give up a much show. Next song for the latest news from online technology, anything digital related, give up for the sensational and the Osho. <laughs> and all that sort of good stuff. Well, it's been a big week for the United Geekdom. Uh, this week, the uh, Nintendo 3DS and the iPad 2 launched. Woo! And uh, they sold out within, within days. Uh, in fact, the doors, when the doors of the Apple Store opened, there was a queue all the way down Regent Street, 300 virgins long. Um, <laughs> come on, we all know it. Now, um, <laughs> there was a guy uh, who queued for 33 hours to be the first in line to get the first iPad. This, this is him, uh, Jules Lewis. Uh, yeah, his imaginary friends taking up positions two, three, and four there. But 33 hours, I wouldn't queue 33 hours for a kidney. This is ridiculous. <laughs> uh, if you worked in the Apple store, wouldn't there be a part of you that would be tempted to just open a door and go, oh, sorry, mate, no, it's next Friday. <laughs> Yeah, you must be using the calendar on the old iPad, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. See you next week, bro. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so we've got a little clip of Jules. Uh, he was asked why it's so important to him to be the first in line to get the iPad. This is him. If you're a competitor in the Olympics, you always want to get that gold medal. <laughs> <laughs> if you are a competitor, in the Olympics, you always want to get the gold medal. Yeah, Jules, you are not Usain Bolt, you know what I mean? <laughs> it took you 33 hours to do 100 metres. It's ridiculous. <laughs> that is lazier than darts. <laughs> and, and the thing about him as well, he's a financial advisor. Yeah, that's the sort of example we need, and it? Take two days off work and then spunk all your wages on a digital train. <laughs> Cheers, Jules. But um, uh, what I don't understand as well is queuing 
for an iPad. The iPad is essentially a toy. Because people always say, oh, no, 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 it's a work tool. Yeah, you can get Excel on it, and like, you can do spreadsheets and stuff like that. Bullshit, right? The first thing that people are going to do is download Angry Birds and fat boob their mates. <laughs> Come on, let's do it. Let us be honest now. But the reason people like, you know, the iPads and the iPhones and all those products, the thing that people really love about it is doing that, don't they? They love that. They love that swish. Yeah. And I would love it if real life actually weren't like that. Like if you've had enough of your boyfriend's face. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <I'll> go back. <laughs> or like if you meet a bloke that you really like the look of, but you want to upgrade him a little bit. Ooh, just to spend that. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> And again, I get to bring a good news story to Stand Up for the Week, and this is one of them. Um, the story is about two people who met uh, via internet dating. Here they are, Sarah and George. Uh, oh, oh. Only to find out that they're actually brother and sister. Yeah, yeah. They said, we've got so much in common. <laughs> like 98% of your DNA. <laughs> she put on her profile, like 42-year-old stunner seeks Gandalf look-alike. <laughs> oh, my God. The most surprising thing about this story is that she is 42. <laughs> uh, I'm not, you would be disappointed if you look like that at 62, wouldn't you? I mean, I'm, I'm not being rude or anything, but honey, get some fruit. Do you know what I mean? Go for that or something. <laughs> I don't know what it is. But uh, this has been represented as a good news story, and it is, of course it is, as long as that conversation happened before anything had happened. You know, because what you don't want to have is, oh my God, what a coincidence, my brother's got a mole on his cock too. I don't want to do it. Come on, we don't want that. But to be honest, right, I'll see you later. Is it too much for you? <laughs> really? Are you with your sister, or is, what is it? Is it... <laughs> would be offended by that. He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm going to go and have a crafty wank about it. Well, I'll see you later. <laughs> um, uh, oh, too much? <laughs> but to be fair, looking at them, it doesn't look like it's the first case of incest in their bloodline. Uh, just trying to imagine what their family tree would look like. It's probably just a bamboo rod. Do you know what I mean? Just completely straight. Oh, they couldn't keep their six-finger hands off each other. Oh, oh, bless them. It'll be fine, you know, eventually things will settle down and they'll get into the normal sibling rivalry that people have. They'll be like brothers and sisters up and down the country. I want to go on top. No, I want to go on top. No, I want to go on top. No. What? I'm talking about bunk beds. <laughs> you sick fucks. <laughs> no, I meant fucking, yeah. <laughs> in the digital domain. You've been lovely. I've been Andy Osho. Cheers. Good night. Still to come, Sean Richardson and tonight's special guest, Paul Chowdhury. Thank you and welcome back to Stand Up Week. Start with Gun. We've got our special guest, Paul Chowdhury. But first, given his report from the world of sport, it's uh, fantastically funny. John Richardson. <laughs> So the week in sport, the big news, the big news in sport this week is, of course, the banana being thrown at the Brazil-Scotland game. <laughs> it really annoys me that the banana has become a symbol of racism, because on a purely, pl I just like bananas, and I hate the thought that they'll become a symbol of racism, because then every time you go to the supermarket, you have to go, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Fucking racists have been here slandering their filth. Because right. at first it was assumed, the banana got thrown, they assumed it was a Scotland fan, and there was a big uh, hoo ha, and everyone was getting home from the game, and their man was like, Did you throw that banana at that guy? Neymar! Did you? <laughs> no, I did, but that was his name, Neymar, I. I'm going to batter you. A pizza for your tea. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. They then decided, someone was at the game and they tweeted, they said, no, I was there, it wasn't a Scotland fan, it was what they described as an over-exuberant South American, which is an even better image, isn't it, that somewhere out there is a South American who, when he gets excited, lobs fruit. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly sat in the stands with a big fucking fruit bowl in his lap, going, it'll be football, but I can't stop throwing the fruit. <laughs> 
for me, be like own goal, I throw a grape, but you score from outside the box, I hit you with a watermelon. I don't <laughs> <laughs> Got, uh, it's got so bad now in South America, the throwing of fruit, that the players have to wear, like, helmets and guards, uh, or as they call it, banana armour. Because <laughs> oh. it turned out it was a German. It was a German, uh, German tourist, went to the game, got excited, because we're not allowed to say it might have been racist now, because it's a German, and obviously that would get fucking tense. <laughs> Or would it? Let's find out. Because uh, I've done a little bit of research into the guy who threw the banana, and I'm not saying he's racist, but uh, this is a picture of his cat. <laughs> you don't get a cat like that without years of selective breathing, do you? <laughs> Finally. You think that's bad? Wait till you see his fish. Racist fish, who'd have thought it there? And where would a racist man live? In a house that looks like Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> so the other, the other thing that happened this week, Mario Balotelli, he's a Manchester City player, he threw darts at the youth team. Which, <laughs> we've all done that when you get a bit bored, haven't you? You throw darts at, you know, young players. And not, not at ground level, who can't throw darts at ground level? He went to a first floor window <laughs> to rain darts down on the youth team. Well, because he was bored, you know, when you're there, I'm just a bit bored, I'm just a bit fucking bored. <laughs> and what he said, he said, uh, it was just a prank. It was just a prank. I mean, we've really lost the subtlety of our pranks since Jeremy Beadle died, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> if that is the level of pranking now, that in the old days, Beadle's about, there was costumes and he'd pretend to be a traffic warden, he'd get your wife in on it. Now, ITV will have a series called Balotelli's About. <laughs> Basically, just Mario Balotelli waiting outside an old woman's bathroom with a frying pan. <laughs> Boing! Balotelli's about! <laughs> it's so easy to point out how stupid footballers are. And it's, it's almost unfair to mock them. If you don't know how stupid Mario Balotelli is and you haven't seen this clip, this is my gift to you. This is Mario Balotelli trying to put on a bib. <laughs> just when you think he's got it, just ah, get some help off. Get some help off. <laughs> Call for reinforcements. <laughs> we've, <laughs> we've edited that down as a kindness to you, but that goes on for about three hours. <laughs> and at the end, he lobs it on the floor as if it's, it's fucking broken, the bloody thing. <laughs> The thing I hate most about footballers, they're always saying they're bored. You want to know what boredom is? Ask a cricketer, right? England, <laughs> England cricketers finally had the sense to fucking lose this week and come home. They've been away for five months playing a game that even when they're doing it is fucking tedious. <laughs> they spend all day waiting to play cricket and when they are, it amounts to this. This is the most exciting part of a cricketer's day. <laughs> <laughs> They were so bored that they contracted depression. That's what happened. Michael Yardy got so depressed he would rather contemplate death than have to play cricket any longer. <laughs> it's clearly tragic. He came on. Everyone's been very good. To be fair, they said it's horrible. It's not to do with sport. It's just something that afflicts people. Everyone's been nice except Jeffrey Boycott, who they said, what do you think? And he said, well, you know, I was quite lucky. I never got depressed because I was quite good. <laughs> Which is what you want in it, a man to basically say, no, I never had depression, but I'm not fucking shit. <laughs> really nice. If you want to find out more about him, you can read his autobiography, cunningly entitled Boycott the Autobiography, which is both a title and my advice to you. <laughs> Enjoy your sport, don't be a dick. Take care. On Stand Up for the Week, we're going to finish off the show and style with our special guest from the Comedy Circuit. So make him feel welcome. A lot of love in the room for the sensational Paul Chowdhury. <laughs> What's happening, white people? <laughs> so I'm going to do some stuff for you tonight. Uh, none of the old stuff I used to do, like Purple Rain or... Uh... <laughs> 
I'm now the biggest selling Indian act in the country. Three people know me here tonight. <laughs> but when you get heckled amongst Indian crowds, right, they lose their mind. White people just get off, mate, you shit. Indian people's like, shut up! <laughs> you shut up, bastard! <laughs> That's a heckle, shut up! Don't do it, shut up! <laughs> Especially when they get their insults the wrong way around you. Don't take a piss in me, bastard! I'm not trying to take a piss in you. I'm trying to take the piss out of you. Don't take your shit in me. Don't do it, bastard. Let's go home. Take the family, go home and watch it on YouTubes for free. <laughs> a lot of gangsters about this town. It's lo London in general, you've got kids now that want to ask you things. Exactly. <laughs> now, let me ask you something, yeah? You gonna do what to me? <laughs> I wanna ask you something, blood. Let me ask you something, yeah? You can't ask me anything, mate. It's not even a word. <laughs> no, man, let me ask you something, blood, yeah? What's the matter with your arm and leg? <laughs> Why are you gonna move half of your body when you speak? Have you had a stroke halfway through this conversation? <laughs> this white boy didn't like that, right? <laughs> he goes, don't mess about on no bare man's, innit? What? What <laughs> are subtitles when you speak to these idiots? I know bear man's in it. What, men dressed as bears gonna turn up? At the teddy bear's picnic? Goes, blood, I'll blade you, man. What do you mean you'll blade me? You can't blade, you can stab me, you can't blade me. What are you gonna do, shave my legs with a big razor? <laughs> Give me a bikini wax. <laughs> Last one asks, ask, A-S-K, not A-K-S. It turns out he was dyslexic, so, uh, <laughs> so I shot him instead. <laughs> Country's changing. Now we've got MPs going to prison for defrauding the taxpayer. So what we're doing, we're putting them in prison at the expense of the taxpayer. <laughs> we're paying for that shit. You don't want to be in prison if you're like, what are you inside for? Well, I cut my wife up in Bury New Garden, mate. What are you inside for? Well, um, I didn't declare my receipts. <laughs> Bend over. <laughs> That's going to be a long stretch. <laughs> not in that way, but you know. <laughs> He's inside with gangsters and killers. People that hear voices in their mind. Kill them. Kill them all. So is God tells them to do it. How come God never told you to get a job or sign on at the dole office? <laughs> he always tells you to kill people. So was that voice from Saw that, Hello Sarah, I want to play a game. <laughs> you see a little time twitch here. Let the games begin. I wish I had that voice in normal life. <laughs> I get through life a lot quicker than I do now. <laughs> you know, tell your salespeople phone me up. Hello Mr. Chad, you want to buy a loan? <laughs> Mr. Chad is dead. <laughs> Makes me want to kill someone. It's like when you go to a shop, and, oh, would you like a bag with that, sir? I've got £45 worth of shopping here. <laughs> no, forget the bag, I'll use the pineapples as earrings and pour the milk into my pockets. <laughs> yeah, give me a bag, so I'm going to put it in your face. <laughs> then they give you a really crumpled up £5 note with a piece of sellotape through the middle of it. <laughs> Looks like the Queen had a stroke on that £5 note. <laughs> got she stains and cocaine on it. <laughs> Homeless people don't take this five pound note. Now use those automatic tools. Beep, please place the items in the bagging area. I thought to myself, wait a minute, I'm, I'm a cashier now. I'm working in this shit hole. This is the job I try to avoid all my life. I should be getting a discount for putting this shit through this till. So it's a very, it's a very sexy voice. Place the items in the bagging area. Place your items in my packing area. <laughs> I said, but there's, uh, there's people around. <laughs> 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 
legal item in the bagging area. <laughs> You've been a great crowd tonight. It's good to perform here in front of the BNP. I do enjoy you. <laughs> The BNP get a round of applause. Yeah, that's my kind of crowd. <laughs> I tried to join the BNP recently. Obviously over the phone. <laughs> I got their telephone number. I phoned them up. It started ringing, and I got through to a call centre in India. <laughs> Hello, BNP. <laughs> no, no, you can't join, you bastard. <laughs> You've been a great crowd. Kevin Reggie's good night. God bless. See you again next week. God I'm touring Australia uh, next month, so I'm taking her with me. Oh, great. Either you've toured Australia or you're just wooing because you recognize the country's name. <laughs> uh, she's a bit worried because of the floods that are happening, and she read in the paper in Toronto some of the wilder animals are coming into the city center. Uh, honey, we're on the 18th floor of a hotel. Even if the crocodile was lucky enough to press 18. <laughs> Still has to slide a card in and out first. <laughs> Can't do that, he doesn't have a thumb. Read a book. <laughs> <laughs>